to this week's episode of The Poke Report. I'm Sydney Gray, thanks for joining us. This week we will take a look at the Cowboys' win over Iowa State, as well as the Cowgirls soccer team's performance. Saturday, the OSU football team played in its second consecutive conference home game in a matchup against Iowa State. After a slow start in the first half, the Cowboys were able to overcome offensive struggles and come away with a 37-20 win over the Cyclones. Greg Savino has the start. Looking to win their fourth straight home game, the 21st ranked OSU Cowboys welcomed in the Iowa State Cyclones. Quarterback Dax Garman and the offense struggled early on the Cowboys' second drive of the game. Garman is picked off by Sam Richardson, then again after a scoreless first quarter by Nigel Tribune. The Cyclones would be first on the board with a 6-0 lead after kicking a pair of 34-yard field goals off the foot of kicker Cole Nedden. The Cowboys would respond with back-to-back -back Ben Grogan field goals to tie the game at 6. On the ensuing kickoff, miscommunication between the Iowa State kick returners, nobody picks up the ball and Elliot Jeffcoat scoops it up on the Iowa State 11-yard line. With seven seconds left in the first half, Desmond Rowland rushing up the middle looks to get stuffed, but after a review, the officials reverse the call for a touchdown. The officials weren't the only ones confident about the call that would put the pokes up 13-6 at the half. Uh, on that play, I knew I crossed the pile line. Everyone was asking me, coaches were asking me. I was like, yes, sir, I got in. Uh, get the field goal ready. On the opening kickoff of the second half, Tyreek Hill goes 97 yards for a touchdown. The Cowboys' first return for a touchdown this season. Later on in the third, after a flag negated an interception for OSU, Cyclones quarterback Sam Richardson finds tight end E.J. Bibbs for a 17-yard touchdown, making it a 20-13 Cowboy lead. On the Pokes next drive, Garmin would air it out with a 40-yard touchdown pass to Jawan Seals. In the fourth quarter, Desmond Rowland scores his second touchdown of the day with no questions about crossing the plane. Rowland's touchdown would give OSU a 37-20 victory. Coach Mike Gundy said he thought his team played very average in a lot of areas. Offensively, um, not very good, no, don't run the ball. Uh, as effectively as we need to. Defense held on for a while, gave up a couple big plays, allowed them to stay in the game. Despite the slow start, the win gives OSU a bump in the AP rankings, moving them up to number 16th and tied for second with Kansas State in the Big 12 standings. Up next for the Cowboys, a trip to Lawrence to take on the Kansas Jayhawks. For the Polk Report, I'm Greg Semino. Thanks, Greg. With OSU's 17-point win over the Cyclones, the Cowboys are now 4-1 on the season. The Pokes are ranked number 16 in the AP poll and number 18 in the Amway Coaches poll. This week marks the 75th time in the past 91 weeks that OSU has appeared in the AP poll. The Cowboys will now focus their attention to unranked Kansas Jayhawks as the Pokes travel to Lawrence this weekend for their first true road game of the season. The Jayhawks have beaten the Cowboys only eight times in the past 34 years, and OSU hasn't lost in Lawrence since 1994. This week, sophomore defensive end Emmanuel Ogba played a huge role in the team's success. Elizabeth Bauer breaks down how Ogba was able to impact the game. Many would argue that the best offense is a good defense. This year, Oklahoma State's defense has really proved itself worthy. The Cowboys' defense is ranked 23rd nationally in sacks, with an average of three per game. But defensive coordinator Glenn Spencer looks at each game as its own. So you don't, you don't compare what the team's done against another team. You don't compare what we did against a, a previous team. You don't look at what we're going to do. In the, it's, it's its own separate entities. Spencer has had his work cut out for him this year, helping to prepare the most inexperienced team in the nation for their difficult schedule. The starting defensive line consists of mainly freshmen and sophomores. Junior linebacker Ryan Simmons recognizes that the younger players have to step up and make plays. Not too, too many other spots where there's many freshmen playing mm -hmm. as far as offense goes. Uh, it's maybe one or two, but on the defense, we've had to put in more guys. Emmanuel Ogba is one of those young players who have stepped up and filled in the shoes of those before him. Well, my role is to do whatever I can for my team to win, so I just wanted to just go out there and do my thing. Sophomore defensive end Ogba started out his season strong with an impressive performance against Florida State. His first career start against the Seminoles earned him the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week award, 
which was also his first Big 12 honor. Since then, Ogba has totaled 17 tackles, 10 of those being solo. Ogba has also totaled three sacks, two of which were against the Seminoles. Head coach Mike Gundy describes Ogba as a silent player and placed him on the leadership council. I mean, it felt great. I mean, it felt like I, I'm really doing something, so I'm really proud of that. We've had uh, tremendous success here in the past with having quiet leaders, and uh, he kind of fits that mold. The team will be looking at leaders like Ogba as they prepare to face the more challenging teams in their conference. For the Poke Report, I'm Elizabeth Bauer. Thanks, Elizabeth. We're going to take a short break, but the Poke Report will be right back with a look at the Cowgirls soccer team. Welcome back to the Poke Report. We're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about a different form of football. The OSU Cowgirls soccer team lost its six-game winning streak this weekend as it fell 2-1 to one to Kansas. The Cowgirls also tied against Texas Tech this past Sunday. We sent reporter Amanda Sebring to cover the story. Here she is with the recap. The Cowgirls soccer team traveled away for two games with high hopes to continue their winning streak. Unfortunately, their streak was broken in Lawrence, Kansas against the Jayhawks. The Jayhawks took an early lead when they received a penalty kick that was drilled into the bottom left of the net only 2 minutes and 44 seconds into the game. But the Cowgirls came back quickly with a goal from Madison Mercado. Later in the game, KU got the ball past the Cowgirl defense and scored again. With no scores in the second half, the final score came out to 2-1. to one. On Sunday, the Cowgirls went to Lubbock to face the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. In the 23rd minute of the game, Courtney D.K. scored a goal, giving the Cowgirls a 1-0 lead over the Red Raiders. In the second half, the Red Raiders got their first goal of the game in the 50th minute, tying the game 1-1. The matchup went into double overtime with no scores, leaving them with a draw. The Cowgirls are now 6-7-1 in the season and 1-1-1 in the Big 12. This weekend was, it, it wasn't a terrible weekend. We definitely got some points out of it, but uh, for this weekend, we, we definitely need to win both games. I think it'll instill a lot of confidence in us just to keep going, and it'll definitely make the rest of the season easier for us. This weekend, the Cowgirls are back home in Stillwater to host TCU on Friday and Baylor on Sunday. TCU is right below the Cowgirls in the Big 12 standings at 7th with a 10-2-1 overall record, and Baylor is standing right above OSU at 5th with a 7-4-2 overall record. Next Friday is OSU's last home game of the season as they host the OU Sooners. For the Poke Report, I'm Amanda Sebring. Despite the Cowgirls' loss and draw this weekend, Cowgirl soccer star Madison Mercado has stuck out since before her freshman year. Mercado scored the only goal against Kansas this past weekend, and reporter Natalie Price has some insight on what Mercado brings to OSU. Here she is with the story. Younger siblings usually do not want to follow in their older siblings' footsteps. Madison Mercado is an exception to this. When choosing whether or not to play for OSU, Madison couldn't help but think about family. My whole family went here. I'm, I've been growing up an OSU fan. My sister played soccer here. My mom went to college here. My aunt did. It's just, it was a family thing and it was home to me. Although Madison's sister played soccer at OSU, Madison has made a name for herself. Since her freshman year, she has started every game. She was also the first freshman since 2009 to be named to the All Big 12 second team. All of these accomplishments have not gone to Madison's head. I'm very honored to, do, to be that, but at the same time, as honored as I am to get that award, as a team, I just, I want more for us. We haven't gotten to where I personally want to be and I know the rest of the team will want to be. So, like I said, as honored as I am for that, I just, I want more for the team. Madison's passion toward her team is noticed by many of the players and coaching staff. She is known as a leader on the field, during games, and during practice. Uh, she's, she's led our team for a long time. She's uh, been a big part of it, even though she hasn't, you know, been on the leading score or anything like that. She's had a hand in almost everything that's happened on the field. So she's just, she's a great player and a great teammate to have on the team. Madison is a junior this year, leaving only one more season for her to play the sport she loves. After college, she plans to pursue her career in sports management. For The Poke Report, I'm Natalie Price. Thanks, Natalie. The Cowgirls will return to action Friday night as they host TCU before a Sunday afternoon showdown against the Baylor Bears. Not many people understand how soccer techniques work, 
But the Polk reports Alan Sanders is here to give you some insight on how the Cowgirls change things up. Changing a soccer formation to better match up with opponents is a regular part of the game. Normally the Cowgirls use a 4-3-3 formation which gives them a strong defense and a balanced attack. But in the last game against Texas Tech, the Cowgirls had to switch things up due to injuries on the defensive line. We lost two of our starting back four and so and we also know how good Tech are in the attacking area. So we thought our best bet since we were going to have to play some younger players was to you know, try to contain them a little bit and, you know, to, to a large degree it worked. But Kelsey should play Friday. I mean, she trained today. Nikki, I'm, we're not sure yet. We'll find out hopefully, uh, you know, maybe tomorrow morning. The average fan might ask, if you pull a player out of the front line to add one on defense, how does the team maintain a strong attack? This can only be done by playing to attack on the counter. In a counter attack, the goal is to attack your opponent when they have more players pushed forward, leaving their defense thin. This requires players with speed and physicality to transition from defense to attack quickly before the opponent can get players back on defense. Playing the counter means fewer chances to score. So the goal of the counter is to get the players forward to see this, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, as many times as they can. So even though there are fewer shots on goal, the odds of scoring are better with each chance because you catch the defense too far up the field. Attacking players live for chances like this. When it rarely happens, I mean, it's, it's great. That's what, as a forward, you're trying to play for in a game is those chances to get wide open and score. So when it happens, you just have to bury them. Although the five-player defensive line resulted in a goal by DK and got the Cowgirls a positive result against a ranked opponent last weekend, playing that style of soccer isn't necessarily the most ideal against every team. Carmichael said he plans to use whatever formation will work best against a given opponent on a game-by-game -game basis. Well, against TCU, you know, they're playing a back five, and so it'll be tough to get opening. So we, today we were trying to work on stretching the other team a little bit and trying to open up some space. Regardless of the formation, there's only so much you can do when the team suffers multiple injuries. The Cowgirls will look to get everyone healthy through the heart of their Big 12 conference schedule. Thanks, Alan, and thank you all for tuning into this week's episode of The Poke Report. Be sure to tune in next week. I'm Sydney Gray.